Since Jiang Zemin's regime started cracking down on Falun Gong in July of 1999, its persecution of Falun Gong practitioners has become more violent and brutal despite worldwide condemnations. Mr. Tan Yongji is a 28-year-old worker in a furniture factory in Bao'an. On April 26, 2001, he was arrested and brutally beaten by policemen. Because he refused to give up practicing Falun Gong, he was sent to a labor camp without trial. Mr. Tan was held there for over a month. The guards burned Mr. Tan's legs and thighs 13 times with an iron rod. While enduring much pain, Mr. Tan managed to escape the labor camp and end up in the United States on June 24th. He is now being hospitalized for his injuries in the Park Plaza Hospital in Houston. Mr. Tan's doctor, Dr. Gail Burbridge, stated, What happened to Mr. Tan here is that he was burned severely with a, with a uh, hot metal rod, probably a, uh, like a branding iron and he had multiple third-degree burn wounds along the outsides of both legs and on the inside of this leg. As you can see, there were two here, there are three in this upper leg, two down here, several on this side as well, a series on that side. These wounds that were on his lower legs were actually down into the muscle tissue itself, so they were very severe wounds. Mr. Wang Bin was 47 years old and a computer engineer. In October 2000, he was brutally beaten to death while in police custody. A 60-year-old woman named Li Yanhua lived in Dashi Bridgetown. On February 19, 2000, policemen beat her to death using billy clubs. A disabled practitioner named Zhang Shenfan lived in Twin City. In the early morning of June 10, 2000, Mr. Zhang was taken from his bed and arrested. Zhang was tortured to death three days later. On June 20, 2001, four Falun Gong practitioners were tortured to death in the town of Bai Guo. After severely beating Wang Hua Jun, government officials dragged her to the front of the town hall and burned her alive. Officials later told the audience that it was self-immolation. Another two practitioners were dragged to death by police on motorcycles. Later in that same month, a mass slaughter occurred in Wanjia labor camp in Heilongjiang province. It is confirmed now that 15 female Falun Gong practitioners were persecuted to death. The government reported it as a suicide. The torture and killing of Falun Gong practitioners has spread across 28 provinces and cities. Thousands of Falun Gong practitioners have experienced brutal beatings and other unspeakable physical punishments. Additionally, millions of innocent relatives and friends were included in the government's atrocities. The death toll is rising sharply. March 2000, 14 practitioners were beaten to death while the United Nations Human Rights Commission was in session. During the last month of China's application to the Olympics, there were 35 death cases. According to unverified reports as of August 17, 2001, more than 500 practitioners have been given long prison terms. Over 1,000 practitioners have been illegally committed to mental hospitals. Over 20,000 have been sent to the labor camps without trial. Over 100,000 have been arrested and jailed. And finally, 264 Falun Gong practitioners have been persecuted to death. This is an average of 10 deaths per month. On November 23, 2000, Dr. Tan Yang was charged and sentenced to three years in prison as a result of a secret trial held in Beijing. Tung successfully videotaped and passed to Western journalists the activities inside Chinese mental hospitals, documenting the forced detention and torture of healthy and innocent Falun Gong practitioners. Dr. Tung Chung Yan is in imminent danger of being subjected to the same torture and abuse that she risked her life to end. Resolution 128 
of the 107th Congress officially records. Whereas Tun Chung Yang is a permanent resident of the United States, Falun Gong practitioner and researcher who has been sentenced to three years in prison for spying by the government of the People's Republic of China, apparently for conducting research which documented violations of the human rights of Falun Gong adherents in China, has been deprived of her basic human rights by being placed on trial in secret, and her appeal to the Beijing Higher People's Court was denied on May 11, 2001. 27-year-old Wang Lishuang appealed on behalf of Falun Gong in Beijing. She was arrested on October 21, 2000. Two weeks later, she and her eight-month-old baby died at the Tuan He labor camp in Beijing. Examination of the bodies revealed Wang Lishuan's neck broken, swollen lumps to the head and needle tracks in her waist. The ankles of the baby had severe bruises. There were scars on the face and blood in the nose, indicating that her baby had been hung upside down. Liu Shu Hong was 25 years old and 8 months pregnant. She was arrested on the charge of practicing Falun Gong. While in prison, policemen forced her to have an abortion. Zhao Xin, 32 years old, was arrested on June 19, 2000. She was beaten until her neck was broken. Afterwards, she was sent to the hospital in handcuffs and shackles. After suffering for 6 months, she finally died on December 11. October 2000, 18 female practitioners were stripped and sent naked to men's cells in the Masanjia labor camp. In the evening of May 14, 2001, a female Falun Gong practitioner was beaten for more than an hour and raped afterwards by a Beijing policeman. Forty-nine-year-old Ms. Xu Bei lived in Fuyang City. She was persecuted to death in Guangzhou Mental Hospital on September 10, 2000. Ma Yan Fang from Zhu City was forced into a mental hospital in May of 2000. Two months later, she was tortured and killed. Zhao Xin Li, a lieutenant in Zhukou City, was sent to Mental Hospital No. 261 of the Liberation Army. His situation still remains unknown. Su Gang was illegally committed to a mental hospital and was injected every day with several unnamed drugs. He later died on June 10, 2000. Since July 1999, at least 43 mental hospitals in China have participated in the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners. More than 1,000 practitioners were sent to these hospitals and injected with unknown drugs. The injections led to the loss of memory, severe headaches, nausea, vomiting, extreme weakness, and loss of consciousness. The brutal persecution of Falun Gong also includes force feeding, forced re-education, forced heavy labor, and more. There have been over 100 methods of torture identified that are regularly used against Falun Gong practitioners. Some of these methods include rape of female prisoners by police and male prisoners, widespread use of electric stun devices, force feeding, forced injections, snake and scorpion bites, or exposure to mosquito infestations, piercing fingertips with bamboo sticks, piercing nipples with wire, prolonged hanging by wrists, prolonged and daily beating. Practitioners have been bound and gagged with contaminated articles stuffed in their mouths, deprived of sleep, socially humiliated, endured prolonged exposure to extremely cold temperatures, forced to stand in physically exhausting postures while placed in medieval-style torture chambers. According to victims' descriptions, these chambers were designed too low for the victim to stand and too narrow for them to sit. Additionally, leaning was not possible 
because the walls and ceiling were lined with a series of nails and spikes. The bottom of this chamber was filled with foul, contaminated water. Currently, there are many Falun Gong practitioners being persecuted every minute. Every minute, the lives of Falun Gong practitioners in mainland China are in danger. We must take action immediately. We ask that all kind-hearted people of the world unite to help end this brutal persecution. respects human rights and respects freedom and we will stand with you shoulder to shoulder and those who are suffering we will continue to fight with you justice and freedom the Chinese government to end its campaign torture and murder of the peaceful Falun Gong practitioners in China to end its persecution of Falun Gong to do everything that we possibly can we must not tolerate this can we stop it at least 200 people have been killed in prison Freedom House cannot be silent today it is our responsibility to that to do everything that we can within the practice of Falun Gong a genuine benefit this has to stop Après des années de recherche, j'ai découvert cette méthode de libération extraordinaire qu'est le Falun Gong. Protestera mot om grova brotten och mänskligheten.